So for our first shoot, we leave at three o'clock in the morning, and uh, we're just driving to another city. Um, we have a we have a rendezvous with um, our first subject, so Chester, who, uh, who who've never actually met in person um, at five a.m. in the middle of a parking lot. So we're going really really early so that we can sneak into this manhole. It's way too early for this. Just joking. It's awesome. weird situation where two groups of people meeting in the middle of a parking lot in a completely foreign city. Oh yeah, we're meeting Chester for the first time in this very ghetto parking lot. So we're in the middle of a downtown city and we just kind of lift up this manhole and uh, pop like <laughs> like three, four suitcases of equipment and just kind of like uh, just shuffling down into this place just as discreetly as possible. So it's this pristine location that hadn't been touched for like 50 years. The entire roof had caved in, but you still had these amazing uh, stone pillars and everything. It's just absolutely gorgeous. So basically the, the concept of this picture is to show um, what's going on in the mind of a retoucher. So we're going to take uh, Chester who is a retoucher and place him in this completely surreal setting. Um, so it's, it's going to look quite interesting. We have some very simple lighting. Uh, there's a softbox in the back and an umbrella in the, in, the, in the front just to kind of give, that, uh, give, give a little bit of edge on the side and a little bit of fill in the front. Uh, I didn't want anything that, was, that stood out too much because uh, it would look too unnatural. So. Um, it's uh, pretty simple. We're going to probably do a panoramic HDR by uh, stitching these images together to really get a feel of the place because otherwise there's, there's no way we can do it. So that's that. All right, Chester, pose for me. Ten years ago, I was a retoucher. Nowadays, I'm a photoshopper. I get, get really uh, illustrates like um, the, the attitude of the market at the moment. My clients come to me for a solution because if they if they want to have a Photoshopper, they can go anywhere cheaper. You know? But it's just they go they go buy Photoshop, they buy Chester. So I guess a kind of result of, of 20 years creating your own style and creating your own thing. And that's the same reason why I have kind of difficulty with just sharing all my knowledge and all my information because I've been able to create a setting for myself. It would be like suicide to just throw it all out. But exactly, that's not why I don't agree with sharing. I mean, sharing is a good thing and I, I've educated people, but I knew them personally and I grew to knew their enthusiasm and the way they, they looked at it. And I found it like, all right, I'm willing to share with you. Then the next day for the other half of the project, we actually went to um, see some amazing hunting eagles, some birds. It was a very, very nice experience for all of us, I think. <laughs> you know, what I also realized through this whole learning process is that it wasn't about the new techniques about which buttons to click but what really really mattered was about the vision behind it. I think that that as a creative you want people to hire you because you're an artist not because you're a technician. When, when images were real expensive there was a lot of attention for one image and it was allowed because it was expensive and with the new things on the market those budgets came really under pressure from the producer as well as from the client. It's only having this budget, so you can only spend so many time on it and get like one third of the time it was. But the work really doesn't change 
the work to make good image is the same. So mainly you have to put three days work in one day when you used to have like three days for it. And that's not good for, for the quality of images and for imaging. When you see a photograph changing so much and you're adding so much from yourself in it, which really relies on, uh, on your good eye and on your taste and on, on the way you uh, determine for yourself how you want this image to look like, determine what you want to see, then I consider myself an artist really. But when I'm doing like the latest uh, advertisement of uh, uh, a local supermarket or I just make some groceries look uh, nicer to eat, then I don't consider myself an artist. If, if people don't know me, so like new clients, oh yeah, I need a photoshopper. When like 10 years ago, I need a retoucher, I need a craftsman. And now it's like, oh yeah, photoshop. No, everybody knows it, everybody does it. But that doesn't mean that everybody's able to do it. <laughs> and that's, that's a really a big difference in the attitude of, of the market. And I still consider myself a retoucher. Only the market doesn't consider anybody a retoucher anymore. Because now they're all photoshoppers. Because the two most difficult things about retouching are knowing what you want to see, and knowing when it's finished. And for me it's still very difficult to know when it's finished. <laughs>